We believe we are the company that makes the best IP-based VSCA controllers in the world for universal control of PDC cameras. And I want to give you uh, a few reasons why in this video. Uh, one of them, in a general sense, is that we insist on supporting each camera intimately. So, for instance, with the new tech NDI, uh, based camera here. We know the uh, complete command list of this camera and we have gone through uh, you know deep snow and thunderstorms to make sure that all the settings this camera has and the value ranges it has goes into our controllers. And uh, that, uh, that, that's true for uh, the PDC Fly control I have today and for the PDC Pro which is our little larger model. So in any of our controllers you'll find the complete command set for those Visca cameras we support. And that's pretty unique for a universal controller. It means that uh, when you turn the knob, it will actually uh, know and show the values that are in the camera and not just uh, bump up iris up and down like generic Visca controllers normally do. So uh, that's one of the things we are really insisting on to provide quality in that sense. And another thing, and that's the exciting thing I want to show you in this video, is how we can label presets. So I have uh, two of these cameras on the network tonight. And uh, I have a controller here which is uh, set up with uh, those two cameras recognized. So you can see the buttons in the camera selector light up green because it finds two cameras. So when I select camera number one, I see this is the settings for camera number one. So for instance, if I change these settings and I go to camera two, you can see camera two has uh, different settings for the exposure mode. I can go back to camera one here again and so on. Now, uh, the PDC Pro controller is, uh, well, it's a Visca controller. It has a joystick control. You can see, if I go back to this, uh, um, you can see that I'm obviously controlling the camera here. So um, I can do that. And then it has preset recall. So if I press this button, I access the preset recall and uh, you will see it in a moment. But now you can see the camera react to my preset. So I press the button and the camera will move to that position. So that's presets basic and uh, as it has always been with robotic cameras so nothing new there but the new thing is if you look at the controller you'll see these presets are labeled with text and I don't think you have seen that before you see now clearly that this preset is the total picture this would be audience this is the band this is drums and while I press these buttons the camera are going to those presets so this is how the PDC fly is programmed out of the box. We have this four-way button over here. When I press the lower edge, it's going forth and back between my camera selector and my preset selection. Now, if you look at the graphic there, you see that it indicates I can cycle when I press the edges. So when I press the edge, you see now access to presets seven, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. If I press again, I have presets up to 15. And I press again, I go back to the first five presets. If I press on the other edge, I go the opposite way. So this is how um, the PDC Fly is set up by default. It also tells me that if I press the upper edge, I'm cycling the menu, or uh, basically which options do I have up here. So as I press this one repeatedly, I'm cycling through those. And that is really not the focus on this uh, of this video, but uh, I, and I have shown it in a different one, but you can imagine what this is all about. So uh, you can uh, assign these four encoders to those uh, settings in the camera that you want to control and that's exactly what I was talking about just before that those settings you put onto those knobs are in fact the command specifically um, found for this camera so that uh, there is a perfect correspondence between your controller and the camera just like if this controller was really made for the camera uh, that's how far we're trying to go with these controllers now um, what I wanted to show you is that the configuration on this controller is in fact the default configuration that I might want to modify for tonight's, tonight's show. Let's say I, I go to a concert and I, I, I want to um, um, customize the labels so they fit to the presets I have tonight. And I think it's really crucial that you have these labels for the presets because I have been operating robotic cameras where our oh, preset number five, what is that? Um, and, and, and then you press it and it goes somewhere and so forth. So you want the labels to help you and identify and those labels has to be um, specific for each show. But this is really easy. So let's just go back to the, to the, to the controller again here and uh, to the preset selection. By the way, before we do that, let's go to camera one. And if I go to the presets for camera one, you see these are different labels. So it says left, right, host, guest. If I go to camera two, it said audience, band, drums, director. All right. 
Now, let's look at how you change those labels dynamically. What you need is the USB cable connected to your uh, controller uh, because that's the easiest way to bring it into configuration mode. Or oh, in fact, you, you need to do it because what you have is the Skahoy firmware application where you open the serial monitor, you type in the command webconfig, enter, and uh, oh, oh, I need to do it again. Yeah, there we go. I get now a message that I have access to the controller on a given IP address. I type that into a browser, which is on the same network as the controller. And there you go. You now have the controller configuration page for the local configuration right here. And if I scroll to the bottom, you'll see the label field where I can type in these labels. So the labels you see right now, they uh, are delivered by default on this controller in this case. Uh, and for tonight's show, I want to extend it and change it, okay? So first of all, I want to go to 10 columns instead so that I have more labels for more presets that I'm going to use and I'm going to change some of these labels. So uh, for camera number, um, for this camera, uh, I had audience. Uh, preset number three is not the band, it is uh, the singer, okay? And preset number four is uh, singer two. Um, it's a lead vocal, so it's not two, it's actually the, the first one. So, um, and they, this would be choir. And then I might have, um, yes, uh, okay, choir, uh, choir close up one. Uh, choir, uh, close up two, choir, close up three, and um, then I want um, left and right, whatever, okay? So now I press save, and as I press save, these labels are activated on the controller. We can actually see it, so if we go back to the controller and we go to the presets, uh, let, let me just see, we were at camera two, we have the presets here. So we should see that these presets are updated, and if I go to page two, that these presets are loaded onto the controller as I press save. Okay, so let's watch the controller, press the save button, and enjoy how these preset labels are instantly active on the controller as I just manipulated them from the web interface. I think that's just so awesome. So, um... Before I wrap up, I want to do something different because I also have a, um, access to a video hub with this controller. This is how I set it up. We can see it if we go to the bottom of the page. Um, can we? Yeah, yeah, we can see there's a, a Blackmagic video hub involved on the network. It's even enabled here. So I thought uh, for the operator of the robotic cameras, he might want to have a preview monitor where he can see the, uh, the, the camera that he is uh, picking with the camera selector. So why not? And uh, the idea here would be to then um, take these five camera selection buttons and then add an additional action apart from just selecting camera. So you see, if you focus on the first column right here called normal, uh, so basically I'll just disable these to not um, disturb you. Um, we have as the first action, we have uh, camera selection. Then we have coloring. So I have set up a, a specific color for uh, for the buttons. And then finally, I am now going to put a given route on my video hub. So you see uh, route. Um, then I take input to, let's say it's output 10. That's the preview monitor for me as the operator, okay? And then I add um, the same thing here for the second. Uh, so that's output number 10, input number two, and uh, so forth. Um, let's go to this one as well, and that is it. We are just going to stop right there, okay? So, uh, I save this, and now um, what I also can bring up here is um, my video hub. So, you see um, input number or output number 10 is currently assigned to input number 11, or input number 11 is assigned to output number 10. So, this is going to change, so when I go back on my controller here, you can now see that I'm back on my controller and my camera selector. When I select camera number one, we'll see that input number one is now routed to output number 10. If I press camera two, input number two is routed to output 10. And three, input uh, three is routed to output number 10. Exactly as I would expect from the simple configuration that you can do in Unisketch. I think that's really cool and powerful how these controllers are so easy to customize even in the field in the situation you can manipulate them to do exactly what you want. Mm -hmm.